Welcome to H2K Infosys. H2K Infosys is a e-verify business based in Atlanta, Georgia, United States. We provide 100% job-oriented, instructor-led, face-to-face, true live online software training programs. It also includes access to Cloud Test Lab with software tools. We provide live project for you to work on. We also provide assistance with mock interviews, resume preparation and review, and job placement assistance. H2K Infosys is trusted by so many students across the world. H2K Infosys provides world-class services in IT training with real-time project work for corporates and individuals, special IT training for MS students in the United States, software design development, QA manual and automation, performance testing and maintenance, IT staff augmentation, job placement assistance and tech support. Reduce iPad mini by hundred dollars, right? So let's say the iPad cost right now is six hundred. All the different versions, sixteen GB, or different versions of, or you know, it reduces the price by hundred dollars, right? What happens if the message is delivered twice? What happens if the message is delivered twice? There will be huge loss that they will be incurring just because of the delivery of the message twice, right? So the only one delivery, the GMS ensures that a message will be delivered only once. It's, it's very important, especially for you to understand the real time, right? Whenever a message like this is, is, is delivered twice, there will be huge loss that any company is going to incur on it that is a very important feature i mean usually we really don't understand until and uh, unless we go to the real time and see it but the delivery of a message is only one that's a very important feature that needs to be highlighted and folks in this figure right it is a figure that's from the jms application book here we have different entities right these are sales and we have the inventory and the factory. Actually, depending on the inventory, we do the sales, right? So whenever we use some sales, the inventory gets reduced. And we get the inventory from the factory. The factory for the manufacturing, right? It needs some financial input, right? It talks to accounting. And this manufacturing that needs some parts, it actually plays an order to the parts, right? So parts has its own inventory, which it gets the parts and delivers it. Right? This picture or what you see here is, is more in real time wherein any company can actually have. Right? Let's say if you take any form, if, if an app is manufacturing an iPad, right? It does need the parts that it's going to use for the manufacture of an iPad, right? And for assembling and all these things, you know, it, it to produce some some more, right? It needs some money as well. So it talks to accounting as well. It says, let's say, whenever the sale says we want to place an order of 1,000 units, it could be anything, 1,000 units, right? Inventory, if it's available, it just says yes. If not, or when the inventory is going down, some, you know, it reaches a specific threshold level, it places on order to the part three, and then the part three comment gets us into the past. It means the parts needed for the manufacturing and it communicates to the accounting for the enough budget or you know from the financial perspective and these parts in turn they could talk to that inventory and places an order right this is a real-time communication that happens in any enterprise application so in messaging domains we have something called as point to point messaging so, as the name suggests, what is point-to-point -point messaging? It's, it's one client to another client communication. Then, right? when a client sends a message, it goes to the queue, and there will be one 
client which will be sent. So each message is addressed to a specific queue, and the receiving client extracts the message from the queue. This queue is actually established to hold the message. So when a message is sent, the queue holds the message, and the client or the receiver here reads the message, and as soon as it can, as the receiver acknowledges it, that message will be cleared from the queue. The queue retains the messages until they are consumed by the receiver. Right? And there is one more thing. There will be an expiry for the messages as well. Let's say if there's a deal that's going on for Thanksgiving, right? There's no point if the message is received after Thanksgiving, right? After the specific date, because there is there is something that makes the message to expire, right? So queues retain the messages until they're consumed by the receiver or until they're consumed or until the expiry date. Queue is nothing but kind of a bucket which holds the messages in transit between the sender and the receiver. Here in point-to-point -point communication, each message is going to have only one consumer. And the sender or a receiver of the message has no timing dependencies. So whenever the sender sends a message, right, for the receiver to receive it or for the client to receive to receive it, the client will need not be up and running because the message is already placed in the queue. So it doesn't really matter whether the sender or here the client one is running or not. And upon receiver, the receiver acknowledges the successful processing of the message to the queue. So this is how a point to point communication works. It's very uh, Simple as in one sender and one receiver, where the intermittent, I mean, the messages are queued up, or you know, it's a, it acts as a bucket which holds the intransit messages between two clients. And the queue holds the messages until the messages are consumed or until the message expires. And so, Neha, are, so yes. Neha, quick question. In this case, like, so messages uh, will be delivered in the first come, first out. Order, right? Yes. Yeah. I and mean, FIFO, you know, whatever is the first, it will be delivered first and, you know, in the sequence. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what, what is the other point of communication that we have? Is the publisher subscriber. So, what do you think is the publisher subscriber? There will be one publisher who publishes, and there will be many subscribers who subscribe and listens to the message, right? It's very simple. There's a publisher, and there will be multiple subscribers, right? So that's what you see in the picture as well, right? So which holds this kind of thing to the top? We have a queue for point-to-point -point communication, and for publisher-subscriber model, Right, we have a topic. When do we use this message domain? Right, when do we use this kind of messaging domain? When we have a single sender, right? When we want the same message to be sent to multiple recipients, when a message is intended. For multiple recipients, we use this kind of message in the mail. So the message, the client actually publishes the message to the topic. And the same message, as you see in the figure, will be delivered to many subscribers. The subscribers, who are the subscribers, folks? Who, who do you think are the subscribers? Whoever are interested, right, in, in listening to this publisher, they subscribe themselves to the topic, right? They subscribe themselves so that they could listen 
or they could consume the messages that are published by a specific publisher by creating a subscription, right? And to consume the messages, the subscriber has to be active in order to receive or consume the messages. And books, there are something called as durable subscriptions, right? So even when the subscriber is down, or you know, even when the subscriber is not active, right? If it still wants to receive the messages, right? JMS allows like to create durable subscriptions. So the receivers or you know the subscriber, they will be able to receive the messages even when they are not active. So the durable subscription. We provide the flexibility and reliability by allowing the clients to, by allowing the recipients to receive messages even when they are not active. So there are two kinds of messaging demands that are followed. One is the publisher subscribers, and the second is the point to point and the publisher subscribers. So usually, what do we do? The destination is, is like a queue, or you know, we send it to a queue or this is queue. The basic thing what we have is a connection factory here. Right? Let's say there will be a destination that is created, and the rule for it for whenever we start writing some code, whenever we want to do something, we need a connection factory. And from the connection factory, we create a connection. And we create a session, and from the session, we have a producer who produces the message. Right? The producer produces the message. And one more thing, if you observe here, even the message is created on the session. It's, it's not, we create the message, and the producer sends the message. And there will be a consumer who consumes the message. You know, who could receive the message from any destination. So it's, it's, it's very simple. We create a connection factory. We have to create a connection. We create a session. From the session, we create a message. And the producer actually, from the session, we create the producer. And the producer actually produces the message. And the consumer consumes the message. That's the JMS programming model that we have. And in market, we have the active MQ. IBM M2 and Rabbit M2, right? So in my computer, I have installed Active M2. I went to the Apache site, downloaded it, and in the configuration file, I actually specified for the creation of the queue. I created a queue with name h2k.q, right? Whenever by default installation, right? So we have to go to the installation. I just got a jar file for. Usually, when we go to a project, we don't, you know, these queues will be configured, be kind of it. It's, it's a very rare scenario where, you know, we create the queue. We usually configure it in our servers or, you know, we write code to actually connect it to them. So I got a Z file, I extracted it, where we just have, you know, different folders like then it has some examples. All this thing. So actually, inside this, you have a configuration file where we create. We say the name of the queues and everything in the destination. So you get this XML. We don't create this. Like we need this XML, but we actually get this XML file by default. And we could go and change the contents of this XML. So here I have something called the destination. And we create the queues and you know inside the destination. So here you see it here. Queue. I created a physical. I um, mean the physical name is history dot queue, right? So I'm I'm just using. I'm trying to connect or you know use the queue here in my code when I'm interacting with it. So, first, as we discussed, the first we create the connection pack. So, when we start, right? So, in the, when when we started, we for us to connect 
to the suffix Q, right? We ha it has to be up and running. If it is down, we cannot actually connect to the Q. So by default, if you ch change it, right? The listening for connections is at 61616. Is it here? So th that is the default for accident queue. And there is a property async cell. I'm just specifying it as Q. I'm creating a connection factory here. I'm creating an active MQ connection factory. Folks, as you all know by this time, whenever we are using the API or this library, we have to get the specific JAR files, like the active MQ all has the information. We have to get those JAR files and we have to keep them in the project build path, right? Otherwise, this, this is not part of JRE. This active MQ connection factory or this connection factory, they are not part of the JRE. So for us, these interfaces and classes to get recognized, we have to get those JAR files and we have to put them in the project build path. Usually, you, you will have the download stick to your project, you know, repo. You can download it from the repository or you could go to the net and download them from the Apache website also. So, once we create the connection factory, from the factory, we are creating the connection, factory.create connection. And after we create the connection, don't forget to start the connection. We just start the connection and we are creating the session by saying the auto in the auto acknowledge mode. So it does an auto acknowledgement. And folks, each queue that we create is a destination. It's used as a general for destination. So session dot create queue of we are giving the name of the queue. Here. And we create producers to produce a message or to send the message. Right? So we create a producer from this entry. And one more thing, interesting thing is we create the messages in that specific session only. Session dot create. And how do we send a message? We say producer dot send. So this is the part where we are actually sending the message, right? We created a destination, we created a queue, right? We created a queue here. Mm -hmm. We have the queue, we're just referencing it from what is that the broker, and we're creating a producer object, which, produ which could produce to the queue, or which could send messages to the queue, right? That's why it, it takes a queue, it, it takes a destination, because whenever we put a message, where does it go? That is what we are specifying here as a destination. And we are creating a message. We are just creating a text message here. We are text message. And we are sending the message here. And then who could consume, who could consume this message? We are creating a consumer and consumer dot receive number. We could just say receive. Because it, it just try to receive it. If it doesn't, if, if it won't receive, it just receive. But when you say receive, it waits until it receives the message. So once we got the message, we are calling the get text method to get the exact text from the text message object. So what do you see here, right? The code, right? So in a server environment, right? What do we do? We use the context lookup to look up for the connection factory. So we use the context lookup. It's called JNDA. The, using the JNDA lookup, we look up for it. We configure the queues in the server and we create a context object. And from the context object, we actually look up for the connection factory. But when we have a standalone code, standalone Java programming, we create the object as we just did here. But when we have in a server environment, we give the connection factory name, we create a connection factory in the server, and we look it up using the JNDA lookup. This is the exact code and code. New insert context, and context.lookup of will provide the connection factory. That same work. 
you choose our topics, it's going to be the same. What is it we create in this server? It's a, it's a very important interview question. Also. And of course, when you go to real time, we do it every now and then. We create the data sources or you know, the few configurations in the server. And how do we look them up in the code is JNDI lookup. And even through string configuration, you could, you know, uh, get the resources using the JNDI. If, if we just uh, Google for the uh, syntax, it's just a, or some syntax like that. So whenever we have the server environment, we use the JNDI lookup to look up the data sources or the connection factories. But in a standalone code, we create the object using the new new active and connection factory or you know new queue or topic. It is the same code that we just did here. But in a server environment for the lookup of queue connection factories or data sources, we use the JNDA lookup. So there are different So many of our students have given testimonials on how our training programs are. You will find them on kudzu.com and on our website h2kinfosys.com. On our website h2kinfosys.com, you will also find more detailed information on who we are, the courses that we offer, what each course covers. Also, if you're interested in a demo program, please register on our homepage on the left hand side. Just give us more information about yourself and we will send you a link for a demo class. The demo class is absolutely free. Experience our commitment by just attending an orientation workshop at no cost. Our team of faculty and advisors are here to guide you with the right information. If you still have more questions, please feel free to call us. Call us at 770-777-1269. This is a United States number. If you're calling from the UK, call us at 020-337-1269. 1-7-6-1-5. You can also email us at training at h2kinfosys.com or h2kinfosys at gmail.com. Thank you for watching our videos. We wish you a great career in information technology.